Okay, well, welcome to another Light for the Journey. We were gone last week. Well, actually, we weren't. We did a, uh, a concert, a pick a hymn kind of thing, and uh, it was lots of fun. We streamed that for you. We did not, I don't think we recorded it, but I certainly didn't put it on, on YouTube for that. But we, we welcome you to the program tonight. It's going to be fun, going to be interesting. At the last minute, we have invited somebody to join us, Tim. Tim Toffel goes to our church. Uh, he's here in the center. Uh, to to his left is Terry Husser, who's who's here every week, co-host. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Has uh, things to say, usually about my preaching. It's usually nice too, and uh, I'm glad that you're here. A uh, couple things before we get started. One is, if you've never been on uh, watched the program before, you can be a part of it uh, through the chat program, Chat Wing, and so. Um, you, you go to our website, uh, www.discoveroakhills.com, and go to live streaming. You'll find, you'll find there a um, chat wing where you can chat and you can, you can watch the view as well. Um, yes, we are in the uh, lobby of our church. Uh, it's different, right, Terry? We don't have it's we don't have all the all the different. bells and whistles that just we're used get, to. Just get used to that other place. <laughs> switches it up on us. Yeah. Well, it, to be honest with you, to our viewers, we we I'm having Microsoft issues. They keep they keep changing my driver software, so um, I couldn't get it to work. And so at the last moment, we were setting up cameras here in the lobby, and uh, so that's the reason why we're in a different location. And we're doing the best we can with sound and audio and all that good stuff. But we're glad you're here. We're glad that we can do this. And uh, glad uh, that come Wednesday, all the decisions will be final, hopefully. Unless they're counting chads. You yeah, remember that? Chads. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hanging chads. So tonight is, I feel like I want to pray, you know, with all the stuff that's been going on. But tonight is, uh, is politics. Terry? has forced me to not do politics for the most part. You forced me. We're not going to talk politics. Guess what? Tonight we're going to talk politics. We're going to talk party. Tim is here because he's been asking me questions, and I'm going to let him ask questions earlier for those of you who have um, were watching the, the pre-show. So here we are, Terry. Come Tuesday. You know who you're voting for? Well, of course. So of course. You've got it. Has there ever been um, any doubt? Any doubt for you? Absolutely not. Yeah. You know? Not for me. I know who I'm voting for. You know who you're voting for, Tim? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, remember to talk in there so that, that our audience can hear it. Uh, I'm I'm thinking that most of America knows who they're going to vote for. Um, some recent developments as of today. The emails, you know, the new opened investigation, not going anywhere from my understanding. Uh, you, you were sharing that with me a little bit, so there's no reason to pursue that. Share with me. I didn't get to see I, it. My wife was telling me it's all secondhand for me. I, I was busy. The little bit that I heard on it indicated that uh, they hadn't discovered at this point anything more than they knew before, so that the decision that they made in September or whatever is still the same. Still is. That there isn't enough. It was back in August, I think, when, when Comey decided that. It was a strange decision, too, on his part, because he, he is not generally the person that gets to make that decision. It's generally the Justice Department that gets to make the decision of whether there is uh, probable cause to uh, charge a person. He's only a fact finder. The FBI is supposed mm -hmm. to be finding the facts and not being the judge of whether those facts warrant a, a pursuit in a court of law. But anyhow, it was a strange thing, you know, that whole situation. It, it has been um, interesting. What, what I, I find um, troubling, last week I saw uh, uh, Donald Trump with, um, you know, the um, LGBT flag flying that. And, of course, our church, for those of you who are viewing in, our church, I mean, this will be out there for the whole world to know. But um, while we love all people, you know, we, we, don't, we don't throw anybody out. We, we do take a stand that, that the Lord has said that there's certain things that are sin and it's not negotiable. And, that's and right. that just, you know, and, and that's, that's and where we stand. You see in. that people holding up flags. And so that the fact that you saw that doesn't mean that he's the one. Well, no, he actually yeah. held a flag. 
He held one? Yeah, you didn't see it. I did not see that. Yep, yes, he did. Yes, he did. You know, so that makes things quirky for us as Christians. And uh, the question that Tim, the reason Tim's in the middle, we, we put him here last moment because he had this, this question. Go ahead and ask your question. It was a good question, Tim. Go ahead and ask it. Oh, okay, so uh, the question that I had uh, is uh, if you're a committed Christian, uh, what's a person to do? in an election like this uh, from the standpoint of um, in the presidential, the national presidential election, neither of the major party candidates are uh, perfectly in line with Christian doctrine. So there's pretty much four, four things you could do. You can vote for Trump, you can vote for Hillary, you can decide not to vote at all, or you can vote for one of the third party candidates. So those are your four choices. So now, what my question was to Pastor, you know, uh, given the imperfect choices in front of us, what's a committed Christian supposed to be doing in this election? Okay, which is a, which puts a pastor on the on, on the spot. You know that. I, I, I know. And <laughs> you're not preaching from the. You're not preaching from the. Um, from the pulpit. pulpit. And and, and I, I kind of I think I know what the answer is, but I kind of want to hear it and maybe get you know, okay. a biblical reference. Well, um, I have done my best, for those of you, if you watch, and I've done my best to help us navigate this, this sea. Um, sent out this email. Sent out this email. You, you, you got this, right? Did you uh, see it? I have not seen that just yet. Okay. Um, sent out this email Thursday because of the trudge through the fact that we have, as far as Christians, nobody really that meets the caliber of what uh, Christians ought to be. Nobody uh, takes the, the firm stand of what this is sin and, and this is not and that kind of stuff. And so we're, we struggle with that. And I've heard someone say that it's like, you know, you, you go to the, the voting box and you have to hold your nose and put a clothespin on your nose and make your vote kind of thing. Um, I, I think it's a common sense thing. I think if we there, there are several things that come into play as I've tried to help my people. Um, on, on how to figure out who to vote for. Um, I sent out this email, and the reason I'm bringing it to, to um, light for the journey and to those who are, are tuning in is that, um, <clears throat> the, you know, it, to, to inform and to educate uh, some, of the, some of the issues. And I sent Pastor Jim Garlow. He answered that question uh, in a Facebook that has had over 4 million shares. Um, to be quite honest, my counsel to my church, that's, you know, and the rest of you are listening and you'll, you'll, you'll listen to the Holy Spirit, but my counsel to those that God has given me charge of to you and, and to Terry and those back there behind the cameras um, as well and anybody who comes to, with us is, first of all, to pray. The second thing is, is to understand that this is way past the character of an individual. This is way past character of an individual that we're looking at. <clears throat> we're looking at issues that are um, that are going to pu be put into place that will affect our our children and our grandchildren and our grandchildren's. It will it will determine uh, a direction for America, which which is a game changer for us as we as we think about this thing and we look look at what God wants to do it's really a game changer and what I'm talking about what I'm talking about is I, I know that there are three uh, Supreme Court justices that will that need, will get appointed possibly four but there's even talk that there'll be a fifth um, if they should retire early which has been you know so there's really uh, a major shift going to take place with the Supreme Court justices and the reason that is so important Important, at least where America is today, is that it seems that even though, not according to the Constitution, they're not supposed to be creating laws, they're supposed to be enforcing the law, um, they're actually creating laws. And so they're determining um, who we are as, as Americans. And um, there is this, this thing called right and wrong that seems to be just lost certainly in politics. It is so bad in politics that our leadership, um, the people that we have to put a vote on, that our leadership, you know, we, we, we really do have to hold our nose and, and do that. And so 
I, I'm, I'm saying to you, Tim, you, you, the, four, the four options, you know, is you vote for one of the two parties or the third, third party, you, you've mentioned them, or you don't vote at all. Let, let me say this to those of you who are thinking that you can not <coughs> vote at all. Your hands are still going to be dirty. Uh, I forget who said it, uh, but it's been quoted in pulpit after pulpit after pulpit over the years. You know, uh, the only thing that is necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. Exactly. Okay. And and what we're looking at, what we're looking at, folks. And you can chime in here anytime you want. By the way, uh, we we kind of jump in on each other. But what we're looking at is an issue of of justices who are determining good and evil. I mean, if you, if you break it down, you know, what is, what is good, what is right, uh, what is righteous, um, you know, and, and, and our laws are based on that. Our laws are actually based on the Ten Commandments. To be honest with you, our laws are based on the Ten Commandments as a nation. Now, I'm not sure it will stay that way. You know, it depends, it depends on this election. Um, so for, for believers, doing nothing is not an option. Doing nothing is not an option. Um, Before we go too far from that, sure. can I say something on that? Yeah. We have one candidate that when he started running, brought up the political correctness that we've seen shoved upon us all of these years. The, the statement, all that's necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. That's political correctness. That is the whole goal of political correctness. To silence. Is to intimidate and silence. Keep the people from speaking up. Then you get your little coexist and your little tolerance stickers going on the <laughs> back of your car. that says, oh, well, my Bible says that that's evil, but of course I wouldn't want to look intolerant, would I? Oh, they might call me hateful. This is all political correctness. This is all manipulation and control it's to keep the good people from speaking up. Because or voting, everything, in every, this case. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah, just just keep silent. And there's one candidate that more towards the beginning spoke up against that political correctness. It's been used by the left. Oh, and by the way, what are, they're, they're, they're not called left so much anymore, or liberals. We've changed it to progressives. Now, doesn't that sound positive? We're uh, progressive. We're progressive. <laughs> yeah. let, me, so, let me just stop here for a moment. <laughs> Folks, uh, for Life of the Journey, we have avoided politics. <clears throat> in, in, I, and I know that you guys have to be picking up on this. But this is a, this is a, a passionate topic for Terry. <laughs> yeah, I, I got, I picked up. My prescription of blood <laughs> pressure meds this week, so I'm good to go. <laughs> okay. Is there any questions, by the way? Anybody's chimed in? Okay. Uh, the question came from, do you remember who? Would it be biblically okay not to vote, vote at all? Uh, actually, biblically, I can't think... Um, uh, from Cassie. Okay. Um, because we had so many camera problems, I was planning on find, digging up the scriptures that talk about, um, and there are scriptures out there dealing with um, bad scales and deal, dealing with um, false testimony. And, and it talks about, there are scriptures that talk about how sinful it is when people know the truth and remain silent. Yep. Okay. So, so just a, a little more input on to help biblically, because that was the question biblically. We really didn't answer it biblically. We answered it theologically. But biblically, there are scriptures. I don't have them for you. I can look them up. You can certainly look them up yourself. Knowing the person that asked this question, I know Cassie will look them up. Uh, but there, there, are enough, there are enough verses out there biblically that talk about that it is sinful for a person to know the truth in a, in a, in a court case to remain silent. So silence or doing nothing biblically is not is not optional Omission, either. I believe yeah, and, and I think it's interesting. I, I think it's interesting as well, Cassie, that um, it, it's it's dealing with social issues, kind of like where we are with voting, um, kind of thing. Is there? Is, got another question?
So, okay. Any recommendations on who to vote for? Well, let me... Good sources. I'm good sources. Relax. Well, here's what... If I don't know if I'm a good source. I did some homework before coming to this. And it's kind of, you know, your question, which, which great, Tim, four points, you know, four options that we have. I just ruled out one, okay? Um, I think I'm going to rule out several for Christians. Go ahead. You have a question? Well, well I was just going to make a comment. I was previewing uh, the ballot because uh, I was going to print it off and give it to my kids because I have a couple kids that are going to be first-time voters. Sure. And so one of the things that's up on the uh, ballot is a constitutional amendment to the Minnesota state constitution. And at the top of that, and, and the amendment actually has to do with uh, whether the uh, state uh, legislatures uh, can vote for their own pay increases or not. And the amendment regards, it says it's top that if you, if you leave it blank, i.e. you don't vote on the amendment, that's like voting no. And so the same thing would apply to if you choose not to vote in the election because you don't believe that either of the candidates is worthy of your vote, uh -huh. either of the two major candidates is wor worthy of your vote, then you've, you've really made a choice. Because we kind of, depending yep. on what state you're in, you kind of know which way that state tends to lean in an in a election, whether it's a blue or red state. So by not voting, then you toss away your your right and responsibility to vote, and you've essentially voted no against the candidate that maybe has the chance to do at least some good, if not perfect, yeah. some good. Well, and that's where we are, uh, Tim. We're, we're looking at what's the base, uh, the best base scenario that we can we can choose, kind of thing, you know. And we're looking at it and understanding, understanding. But you're right. Doing nothing is just not not for believers, you know. Doing nothing for other people, you know, that, that's a privilege. That's a, that's, a, that's a right of our citizenship. We vote, don't vote. That, folks, that's, that's a citizenship right. Um, I, I think it's our civil responsibility to vote and uh, to be a part of it. Um, hence, we're doing this show on politics and, and religion and politics. So they'll take away our, our, our tax status. By the way, for most of you who... Uh, probably don't realize but the church does pay its fair share of taxes we pay um, when you own a parsonage in any properties we pay property taxes we pay uh, the pastor pays social security taxes employment taxes you know there's taxes mm -hmm. being paid just just want you to know so it isn't like it's a huge big deal it just means that uh, you know we the income that comes in as a nonprofit, you know we don't pay taxes on it in that fashion um that, that would be a big deal and not a big deal uh, but anyhow we're talking about politics and freedom of speech, I just believe I have a freedom to say this and a freedom to lead, especially believers. Good point. Good point, Tim. At least in our state, for Minnesota, some of you are on or from Florida, but at least in Minnesota, not voting is the same as voting, no, I don't want that, or, or no, yes, I want that kind of thing. So not voting is it's a vote. Still voting. <laughs> it's still it's voting. Still um, yep. Uh, and, and it's that way for the presidential camp, uh, election as well. Not voting is voting. Um, it's voting to let evil prevail, uh, the worst ca case scenario, um, that kind of thing. Some things, any more questions before I move on? Okay. Not to vote would be a vote for the left because a president has those in those influences yusuf are you putting those up for folks to see the question good yep cassie's mom well cassie's mom we're glad to have you thanks for tuning in uh ann well ann it's nice to have you we, we welcome you to life for journey we do this every every uh sunday night or we try to N usually not in the the, the lobby um, okay, let me let me move on then. Oh, there's another question. Okay, and that's you know, I I don't know any pastor that that would argue with that. Um, if they you know, ultimately um, we try to get our people to to pray about things. See, and I love this because 
What I know is I can trust the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, if we really listen, we're not going to be miles apart in this. Um, if we're really listening, you know, and we pray about it and we think about the process, which is what, what you're doing, which is what you're doing with those back behind the Linda and, and Yusuf behind the cameras are doing. And what I have challenged my people to do is, is pray about it, pray about it, listen to the Lord, listen to the Lord. So Karen, right on, listen, listen to the Lord, because I know that he, he won't lead us astray as a nation. Well, we got there. You're telling me I have 10 minutes? Oh my goodness. According to recording time, 10 minutes. Oh, that's right. I don't have an hour. I have a half hour. Uh, <laughs> Tim, we have this problem in the mornings too, don't we? Sometimes. <laughs> uh, make it an hour tonight. Well, we, uh, folks, when we run out of time, we'll stop the recording and uh, so that we, so people will actually watch on YouTube. Nobody really wants to watch an hour program. But, but stay online. We'll answer questions. And we'll keep on talking about this. Uh, as a post show, we'll do it live. We just won't record it. Okay. So 10 more minutes for our recording. Let me say this. I did my homework and for a good source, this is back to Cassie's question. Um, the political candidates running for presidency. Um, I just, just wanted to share that with you. I, I, I've told my congregation that one of my litmus tests is, is, um, a, the, the standing on abortion. Actually, that's where I start. Uh, that's where I start. And the reason, reason, guys, the reason that that is a starting place, I think it should be a starting place for every believer, is, um, you know, I know all the arguments. I know all the arguments for pro-life and that kind of thing. A woman is raped in, in certain si situations. That, that number is so small. But partial, partial birth abortions, I think if you were raped, even in, for rapes, they, they pretty much know going in. Uh, partial birth abortions becomes a, a major, major issue, and uh, they, they, everything it, it comes uh, 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 the baby comes out of the birth canal, and they leave the head in there, uh, in the birth canal. They, they ram an instrument into the head to into the brain of the baby. I know this is graphic. We don't want kids watching this video. You know, I, I, it's murder. I mean, there's no, you know, and it's, it's not pretty. It's, it's just truth. It's where it is, uh, that kind of thing. And so for me as a believer, um, I look at the, I look at this, the, where, where a platform stands and where uh, a candidate stands on that issue. So when I put this list together, I, I just looked at that one issue. And so I'll share in the video. I only got 10 minutes, probably less than 10 minutes now. But um, the political candidates are running for presidency is Hillary Clinton. Clinton. She's the Democratic Party. I think this kind of duh information, but I'm putting it out there. Just there's new voters. Your, your kids are probably asking you all kind of questions. Dad, how do I know? What, what choices do I make? And so you try to help them. Um, the Democratic Party, she's pro-choice. Uh, partial, uh, partial birth abortion, she says, hey, it's not, a, it's not viable. And uh, it's not an it. It's a person. And it's made in God's, you know, and I, I, I just can't. I mean, they, babies feel pain. Uh, I don't understand that. I don't know how we got there. I don't know how we got here as a nation selling baby parts. I don't. I don't understand that. Uh, Donald Trump. Uh, he's part of the Republican Party. He, uh, the Republican Party is pro-life. He himself has said he's pro-life. Um, and uh, I have in my notes when I sent out this email that you'll get uh, Terry and, and Tim. Is, is that I made this note. I said, may I point out his need to experience the infilling of the Spirit. I don't think any, any believers argue with that point. This guy, this guy needs to be so filled with God. Um, you know, but, but, but he's pro-life. And, and that's huge for a believer. I mean, it, it's part of the Ten Commandments. It's, it's where we come from. Uh, life, life is important. Life is precious. Um, and then there, another another uh, candidate is Evan McMullen. He's an independent. Um, life and abortion didn't even come up when I when I when I research him. He didn't even think it was important enough to talk about. That tells me something. That should tell most voters something, or at least most Christians. That should, that should tell us something. Uh, Gary Johnson is a libertarian. I looked I looked hard at him, uh, a libertarian, and he is pro-choice. I was surprised to find that out. And then the other person you'll see on the ballot is Jill Stein, 
uh, in most states. In, in all, it's interesting that not all these people are endorsed in all states, but they're the ones that, that can be on your ballot is Jill Stein. And she's all, all about, she's called the Green Party. She's all about keeping, saving the earth um, kind of thing. I know that's not fair, but that was, <laughs> you know, and it's not, uh, that was my conclusion, but I was digging hard to find more information, you know, and there wasn't a lot. It was all about uh, taking care of the planet. Um, and so, you know, one day, one day God's going to destroy this planet. That's what the Bible teaches us. Um, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not an advocate of not taking care of our planet, not I recycle, you know, I put it all out there, that kind of thing. Um, so that, that's where the candidates running for presidency stand on, on this one abortion. Um, that that kind of helps me know how I'm going to vote. And I don't know if that helps. Cassie, go ahead, Tim. Okay, so I, before you run out of time, the other thing that you mentioned this morning in, during the sermon, and I think you ought to try to get it in this 30-minute 30, 30, uh, section, is, uh, gee, uh, so we kind of, I think the three of us agree on who we were voting for for the uh, presidential thing, but what happens on Wednesday morning, the day after the election, oh. if that person doesn't win and if someone else wins and and it's like, oh, it's a total calamity. Is that the United States falling apart, or is God still in control despite what the election results might say? Yeah, well, God is in control. And uh, to the Christians, you know, if a Christian perspective doesn't come, isn't what is produced, um, I, I think that is important, Tim. Thank you. God is in control. He's still on the throne, okay? Um, and, and, and I'm going to close with some scripture here. Um, God is in control. He's still on the throne. Um, the, the nation, church, hear me. The nation, they're going to be the losers. Doesn't matter who wins, there's going to be losers who need the church. Okay? Need God's people. They need love. And that's what I was preaching on this morning. I wasn't, I knew that we're at a crossroads and I really wanted to preach about, you know, the vote kind of thing. Three minutes, okay. Uh, the vote kind of thing. But, to, to the rest of the believers, I, I just want you to know the nation is going to need the church more than ever. And we can't be quiet. We can't, we, we can't be politically correct. Um, we need to be truth tellers. But whatever you do, and I, see, I have seen so many things in social media where Christians and believers are just mean. Just mean spirited. And, and that doesn't help anybody. Um, you know, God's got this, and we don't have to be mean about it. Thanks for bringing that up. We don't have to be nasty. We don't have to be ugly. And if I lose, Terry, if we lose, you know, the guy that we want to, to win, and, and we know that it's setting things in, in place, um, you know, let me just say, let me just say to everybody that I'm a stranger walking through this world, and I'm glad I'm a stranger at this point. If it goes south for us as a nation, I'm glad there's a better place where right and where right will prevail and wrong will never show up. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, just one last point. Sure. Uh, it's not not scripture per se, but uh, I really like the Matthew West song that's called "Do Something." So if you Google the lyrics on that song, it's, it really talks about the Christian's responsibility. You know, God's put us on this earth to do something, and we can't abdicate that ability that we have, the God-given talents that that he's given us and not do anything that we should be doing. So win or lose, whether our candidate wins or lose, whether uh, some election issue that we're uh, uh, passionate about gets passed uh, despite our objections, uh, life goes on. It God does. is still in control and uh, we're still called to continue to do something Amen. and pray. Amen. Amen. So let me let me let me leave you with a, with with this with a, a, a scriptural thought. Normally we talk more about scriptures than we got to tonight because it's politics. Everybody, I want to say some. Any more questions before I go on? Okay, good. Um, why is it in the lobby? Because the can, the computers on the fritz in in the uh, studio, and so we were uh, setting up cameras and that kind of stuff. So. No, it wasn't the quite question I want, but it's a question nonetheless. Um, in, in Chronicles, listen to me, church. In Chronicles, Second Chronicles, it says this, 714. If my people who are called by my name. Notice there's a condition. In mathematics, they taught me uh, if is a condition. Tim, you're an engineer. If is a pretty, pretty important thing, is it not? 
If, if my people who are called by my, my name, who is it that's called by God's name? It's, it's Christians. It's Christians. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It, then, listen to what God says. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. And I love this. Say, no matter what happens, no what, matter what happens, listen to what he says, and, and will heal their land. I'm praying for our nation. Praying for our nation. I hope that you're praying for our nation. But hear me, church, when I say this, that it struck me that no matter what decision is made and it sets a, 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 a way in, in our future, God is telling us that if we want to help and bring healing to our land, no matter where it's at, no matter where it's at, is, is if the church will step up. The people who are called by his name is the church. If the church will step up. And so it's on us. It, I like what you're saying. It's on us. It's on us to seek God, church, and pray for our land, confess our sins, acknowledge his righteousness, take him at his word. Take him at his word. He tells us what's right. He tells us what's wrong. And he determines that, not the Supreme Court. And, and, you know, and that's where I am. I could go to jail for this before it's all over, but it's true. <laughs> but if we want God to heal our land, our nation, we, in, in our nation, we're not without hope, folks. That's what I'm trying to say. We're not without hopes. Well, they tell me I'm way past our time uh, for the recording. Uh, I need to wrap this up. So thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in. It's, uh, it's Tuesday's coming and we're getting ready. We're actually, our church is a polling place. So we, we're buying cookies and serving coffee first thing in the morning. People will be lined up outside the doors. I'm sure of it. Uh, that's usually how it is for, uh, and we're going to love on people. We're going to love on the Democrats, Republicans, the Libertarians. They're all going to come in our doors and, uh, we're going to love on them. We're going to love on them. We're going to love on them. And we're going to trust God. Thanks for tuning in. If you're looking for a church, and you live in, in, in Rochester or anywhere close to it, we welcome you. People say it's a loving place to go. I, I'm the pastor here. I'm always, uh, pastors are always proud of their congregations, but it's really true. You guys are the real deal. Thanks for being here, Tim. Uh, if you're far out and you uh, farther out or don't live in Minnesota and you can't be here, we stream every Sunday morning. You're welcome to worship with us. I know Cassie got on this morning because she was sick. And... Uh, and we stream our services live as well. Thanks for tuning in. Stay with us. If you have more questions, stay with us. We'll do a post show, but we're going to stop the recording. So go ahead and stop it, Yusuf.